Nordic Rebels Season 3, Skills for the Future. Um, when was the last time you actually checked you know, these lists telling you what kind of skills you need for the future? So you need creativity, analytical thinking, interdisciplinary knowledge, emotional intelligence, leadership skills, technology skills, skill skills. The lists, they just go on. But is it really about like ticking the boxes or establishing something long term, something more positive or something actually that changes in your body? That's what season three is going to be all about. So enjoy the ride. <laughs> Hi, Moi. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Nika. I'm JJ. Um, so we, uh, uh, <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> I, I'm feeling a bit nervous about this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, relax. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good feeling. Um, I'm gonna enjoy your your thoughts on this. Um, okay, so the main question is what kind of challenges have you identified mm. in your work? Mm. And then um, more specifically uh, in the context of organizations trying to adopt design as, pra as part of their transformation strategy. Mm, yeah, thank yeah, thanks for the question. Well, I do enjoy more talking about challenges than <laughs> like opportunities or benefits because we definitely encounter a more number of challenges <laughs> than yeah, yeah. perhaps like outputs or the benefits. And because there are challenges, there are still the work to do and the you know, goals and aims to mm -hmm. move forward and achieve. Yeah, it's, uh, th there are many challenges, especially in my work. Um, I uh, focus on transforming organizational process and the mindset and the ways of doing in the public sector organizations mm -hmm. so that wow. through design approaches so that uh, by uh, observing the DNA of design approaches like human-centered uh, collaborative and iterative so that they would be mm -hmm. capable of uh, designing public services to be more citizen-centered mm -hmm. and transform the way uh, they work to be more collaborative and uh, iterative. However, so so like um, I conducted projects and uh, like some uh, training programs and some like survey and different kinds of um, methods. Uh, but um, the number one challenge always, you know, like transforma transforming like individuals Mm -hmm. is difficult yeah. and transforming the whole team and whole department and whole organization that has long time legacy is very very difficult yeah. so number one challenge is the design because i'm a designer and i teach design i research about design design as a discipline or design as an approach or a way a logic for mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. is very very alien to the public officers who are more uh, comfortable with the numbers, data, or the evidence, or the theories, mm -hmm. and the fact. But uh, the design basically uh, like frames into problem areas and solutions areas, starting from the what-if question. It's very, very abductive thinking. Yeah. Then yeah. Uh, based on the hard fact, you know. Yeah. So it's a kind of scenario, envisioning way of doing. So that brings uncertainty for public officers. Whereas there are findings from user research and there are, you know, the visual prototypes and scenarios and so on, they still have this insecurity. Is this the mm -hmm. right direction to go? So the insecurity and unfamiliarity to the design as a way of thinking and doing is the number one challenge. And the second is, of course, maybe related to that, um, the because design is quite qualitative approach and the data it generates generates is also quite qualitative, like the stories and the visuals and so on and so on. 
So they seem, for the public officers, they seem to be quite um, uh, non-scientific. So it's mm. too yeah. non-scientific to make any decision based on. So like whenever we present some user findings, the first question is, how many did you interview? So we say, it was in-depth interview, ethnographic research, we did 20. <gasps> how, how can you say, say that 20 is representing, representing the entire citizen? Like they mm, are expecting yeah. at least a few hundred and thousand, you know, the participants. Mm. So, so that the data has some like statistic uh, significance so that they yeah. can believe in that. Yeah. Um, and another thing is uh, the siloed way of working. Because nowadays, the problem that we are trying to solve is very, very complex, mm. open, dynamic, and network. Yeah, so it's not exactly. that one department or one expert can solve the problem, right? So it, 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 it needs the involvement of different expertise and different departments. However, that's not really the way that they are used to do, right? Mm -hmm. As you mm -hmm. might uh, know. So, so like communicating maybe the same thing like over like repetitively in different expertise and different departments is very very inefficient and uh, for one project involving uh, different departments and different people uh, is also very very difficult like they were saying oh this is this is maybe like their problem this is maybe their problem and although I succeed bringing those people in the same table, but the, their perspectives, the or, or their logic to the problem is also not aligned and it's quite misaligned. So mm. calibrating that in the beginning has been also quite a challenge. So we have developed some like tools and methods or some co-design settings to try to overcome those challenges. Yeah. <laughs> or two. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tempted. I'm tempted to say that change is not possible and stop the discussion. <laughs> 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 I, I guess we don't have to settle with that. Mm. Um, like, JJ, I would like to hear more about this. Mm. Um, when you talk about using different tools and techniques mm. to get people to work together. Mm. Because mm. like when I when I think about this, um, so I have I don't have any background or experience working in the public sector. Mm. Well, university yes, um, and a bit of internships here and there. Um, but I, I fully understand that you know when you don't have any kind of KPIs or mm. kind of certain measurements right. promoting collaboration. Mm. So like, how do you actually go about? Um, so that's mm. that's one thing that I would like to know more because mm. I, I, I think that um, change really is possible if you introduce something else it's like something new to the context and at the same time when you understand that in the end it's really about people mm. so like you know spending time um, kind of sp spending time with with the other person like getting to know them and taking the space and time for that like hey we actually have things in common mm. Um, actually, like yeah, like hearing mm. what you said, actually it would have been really, really cool if we have new forms of KPI, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like which can really like measure the benefits and outputs from this collaboration and from this mm. uh, maybe also like multidisciplinary approach, not like only like political engineering, political science, or like one or two particular um, expertise, but like combine it. Because nowadays, not only in the public sector, but also private companies uh, for innovating themselves, the methods that they are adopting are like design, mm. data science, and mm. behavioral studies. And nowadays, also like machine learning and so on. So like combination of all those uh, and, and what kind of um, output it can generate. And it would be so cool if we could have like new types of KPI that can really like make, uh, transform the outputs like or values into metrics so that 
it can convince people, but I don't have that yet, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but that is very, very like, I think one thing that we could really like think and try to have in the future. But um, in terms of the collaboration among like different expertise in the organization, one approach that we did based on the co-design, the notion mm. of co-design, actually I conducted a project here in Art University. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> so we were interested in coordinating and calibrating actually the language they speak. So okay, when they wow. collaborate together, like although they talk about user, yeah. uh, they, they use the same terminologies like user, customers, design, innovation, technology. But what that means is actually all different, right? Although mm -hmm. the word mm -hmm. is the same. And and, uh, and also uh, they tend because they are expert expert experts they tend to use the jargons and very technical terminologies yeah, and yeah, that's also yeah. the way for them to exercise their kind of power <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, and the knowledge right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we wanted to kind of get rid of the uh, mitigate the power hierarchy or the distance uh, from that like the the discipline discipline specific jargons and technical terms and wanted to provide a, some like common language when it comes to mm. the collaboration so we we um, based on literature reviews and the case studies from the all the case studies of the all like different collaboration project we developed a kind of game setting tool called mm. atlas game ah. so it's a project planning game for different uh, people from different backgrounds to come and share their uh, perspectives and uh, interests and also uh, uh, discipline knowledge by you by playing the game together and so mm. so the, 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 the playing the game has a, its own benefits because the game has its own rules right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they can uh, be the players kind of stepped out from their kind of very um, sticky uh, discipline position yeah so yeah. they can be more uh, so they can have a common ground and the rules and all the languages that are used in the game setting are the common languages and common rules that they need to follow so mm. those game rules and the materials kind of facilitate the, uh, the common language mm. and the collaboration mm. and also turn taking. So that's uh, one approach that we try to overcome uh, like different thinking and mitigate the power distance due to the uh, like ex expertise, lev expertise level. Mm. You are one of the people behind the Atlas game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know Atlas game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good that you know. <coughs> no, but sorry, I had no idea that, you know, that JJ, you were also behind mm -hmm. the team. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I need you. <laughs> well, I, I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> um, I, I think that's really interesting mm. what you mentioned about the entering the game space mm. because that's what we really need because we really use language mm. as a way to kind of enact barriers and kind of shield ourselves mm. because like the more language we know that others don't know then we have this exactly what you said like this kind of ivory tower of expertise yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's the same thing like kind of when you d described game and mm. if you look at kind of game theories, like mm. not the economic side, mm. but more like, you know, what is a game? Mm. Like it kind of feels a, um, or resonates with the Finnish sauna. Uh -huh. You know, when you when you right, in the right. sauna, everyone is on the same level, right? Right, um, right. But it's... That's, that's yeah. a good analogy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we actually need, like maybe that's one thing, that we need to create this kind of mm. temporally bound spaces mm. within organizations mm. where we can kind of step in mm. and then step out and then understand like how do we make connections with this experience in our daily life precisely precisely yeah. and if i may continue or add yeah. yeah like the game setting or the sauna setting so mm. um so like seems like like let's say the seems like they achieved some shared understanding mm. then mm. 
another question is how can we support the continuation? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, when they yeah. step out from the you know shared zone. So it mm. also happens that so because it has this kind of particular characteristics as a kind of workshop setting or co-design setting. Yeah, so the people yeah. come in and when they come out, they're like, okay, that is a fun session. Then yeah, they were yeah. just so easy to get just immersed in conventional way of working and thinking. So how can we continuously like help them reflect and you know carry with the what has been discussed or what has been shared within that kind of like make believe setting yeah, <laughs> in yeah. their everyday work. That's another, yeah, I think important question. And actually, that reminds me of uh, question number f uh, three. Uh huh. Um, so I've been told to ask, um, based on based on the discussion so far, can you mm. suggest ways forward? And I think that's what you actually kind of just mentioned. Mm. But if you could just briefly. Um, Kind of summarize. Like I'm an idiot here. So <laughs> <laughs> can can you get a you know refrain or like put it in a really s short, concise, attention span friendly <laughs> way? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, that gives me a pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. Like when you mentioned about this kind of when we enter mm. the shared space mm. and when we go out, mm. how do you actually kind of facilitate mm. that you know we maintain this? Mm. sense of camaraderie in a way. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, I, I don't really have a clear answer. It's, mm. I think, like, I think we all are still experimenting and trying it out. Mm. Oh, well, of course, one way is when we facilitate that make-believe setting, like sauna or the game mm. or co-design mm. sessions, uh, uh, or setting up the session or the setting the stage itself would be very very important in a way that people will think it as a real i mean it's, it's really related to their everyday work and like day-to-day -day, uh, uh practice not like a let's have fun or mm. you know yeah. or some artificial setting so the the setting from the beginning itself is very very important so that they they would take it seriously uh-huh so you have like a gun pointed at your head. Make it serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if that <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing, maybe I will just maybe talk about as an example. I, I don't think that it'll happen. As, that will happen as a like one-off event, right? Mm. So we need mm. actually continuous effort. And in terms of, for example, like design thinking workshops mm. in uh, Singapore, where I work. There, there has been already, you know, this um, fatigue in design thinking workshop. Yeah, so, like, yeah. when they are they are asked to participate in the design workshop, uh, they they say, "Oh, is it another design thinking workshop?" <laughs> like, I've been there, done that kind of thing. So, yeah. there, there, there is this fatigue. So, another uh, approach that we tried was um, actually having the permission or the support from the top management. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, uh, the, together with the innovation unit in one government agency, uh, we kind of um, create a long-term six-month project-based platform. So, th and, mm. and there are, like, in the significant moments, there are these interventions of work workshops so that they can come and get the kind of essential skills and the notions and the methods like during the half day or one day mm. kind of get together session mm. and then and then uh, they are assigned to practice <laughs> what they've <laughs> learned for like another month in their everyday work like applying some like, some interview or applying some observation skills or applying some like customer journey mapping uh, together with their colleagues like uh, till the next get together session, so it's a long term wow. like project based tap based on their everyday operation was actually what we have tried a couple mm. of years ago and mm -hmm. I like. That. <laughs> For the future, you know, oh. what would be the one main skill you think would be necessary for the future? Uh, 
I don't know if I can say that this is the one only skill or the one main skill. Mm. But what you mentioned about this kind of half a year mm. platform mm. and this notion of being able to step in and out of different spaces, mm. I would say kind of perseverance. Mm. Because like, no, like even if you, let's say, you can learn a skill in one of these design thinking workshops or sticky note extravaganzas, um, but does it or will it really stick? Like mm. what kind of skills should we have that really stick with us mm. and enable change uh, that way? So mm. maybe it's more like a kind of meta, meta, mm. meta skill, mm. but like this kind of ability um, to kind of keep on pushing mm. change or mm. pushing like a mm. certain positive direction. Mm. But then, then again, then you start opening a kind of worms like whose direction is more positive and how do you define positive direction? But yeah, I think that's something that you know when you create what you said, kind of common language, yeah. then you start understanding. That, you know, we mm. we have a common direction. Mm. Mm. May, I, may I add <laughs> one thing? <laughs> like, so like nowadays, I talk about this from the designer point of view or design mm. um, researchers' point of view. Like when it comes to the sort of a process facilitation, or so, so nowadays, the one of the emerging roles of designers is really the facilitation facilitation of the innovation, mm -hmm. right? We are not mm -hmm. like innovating technologies per se or, you know, but uh, we kind of facilitate the uh, practice or the process for innovation. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, we, cannot be f be we cannot be free from the position that will influence the direction design, mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, like unconsciously, our I don't know value system, like designer's value system, would maybe I don't know influence the process design or the the yeah. facilitation or the, the design of the workshops or design of the settings, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so how sh how how can we be, be balanced or how can we be aware of our possible influence in the process design? of the innovation so that we wouldn't, so how how mm. do we uh, be sure, how, how can we be sure that we are right, <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? yeah and, and like different people, organizations, animals, you know, and mm. living mm. creatures have different agenda and the value systems and how exactly. do we know that what we believe is right? So this ethical discussion and the value discussion beyond the facilitation of the innovation should be something that we need to keep thinking and maybe try to also push to the students. Oh yeah, I, I fully agree. Mm. This notion of voice. Mm -hmm. like who do we represent? Who? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, precisely. Well, well, we are in this position of we represent users, yeah. right? Yeah. But also, who who are we? You know how how can we educate our users and how can mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. you know still like mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's 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 very sensitive topic still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey JJ, I I really enjoyed this. <laughs> uh, I think we should continue discussion as well. Yeah. Um, I I hope I hope you enjoyed us. Yeah yeah very yeah. much very much I yeah I hope anything that I said <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Thank you so much for also like making this like atmosphere very relaxing and enjoyable. Mm. Likewise, I mean, <laughs> this was a kind of atlas game in a mini version without <laughs> being a game as such. Right, right. We're okay. like acting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
recently are maritime companies and manufacturing companies. So what I do is to help them uh, design their services to be more uh, people-centered, but also I help them uh, uh, grow their own design capabilities so that they can innovate themselves by uh, uh, changing their way of thinking to be more people-centered and also uh, embed more like collaborative and iterative work practices and culture there through design approaches. Um, well, um, I'm originally from South Korea. Um, I studied human-computer interaction in South Korea and I moved to Finland when I was 25 years ol old to do my PhD study. Uh, that's in Finland, that's where I learned about this very exciting role of design and the notion of design, like co-design and service design. And I really enjoyed learning about the society, like the impact of design for the society and the communities and the culture. So that's what I really um, enjoyed learning in Finland. And I was very happy that I am doing design by learning all that. Then I moved to Singapore in 2014, and I was very, very excited uh, about my role uh, which, in which I could maybe apply what I learned in this Nordic country to a very, very new context, which is Asia. Um, yeah, and like working it up, like, and, and I'm especially nowadays interested in um, how the public sector organizations and government agencies in Asia are adopting design for innovating themselves. Because we've seen a lot of examples and the project in like what we call Western culture in Europe and in America. But those kind of things are also happening in Asia, which actually has very different um, governance styles, history, and the society and the culture then how design finds a role and a place in public sector transformation and how then the cultural dimensions and societal dimensions play a role in it is, is what I am very, very interested in. So I'm like very exciting, excited to follow that. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically uh, what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs>